Hi, my name is Ken Lau. You might recognize me from The Ken Lau Show and the Talking Immunology Podcast. Immunology can be a complex and vast network of interconnected cells, and if you're a newcomer to the field, it can all seem very confusing. Our revamped and upgraded Immunological Networks poster gives you an overview of some of the most important aspects of immunology. The poster starts by dividing the topics into two main categories, innate immunity on the left and adaptive immunity on the right. When a professional antigen-presenting cell, such as dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells, encounter a pathogen, they'll use pattern recognition receptors to capture the target, break it down into smaller pieces, and present it to T cells. Viruses can be detected by dendritic cells via TLR7, a toll-like receptor that recognizes single-stranded RNA. Dendritic cells are invaluable to virus defense as they produce huge amounts of type 1 interferons, which interfere with viral activity. Encountering these viruses also allows DCs to mature, present antigens more effectively, and release cytokines that help other cells to respond. This includes natural killer, or NK cells. NK cells are constantly scanning for potential virus-infected cells as they downregulate expression of certain markers. If they are activated, they will destroy their target with a barrage of perforins and granzymes. NK cells can also scan for potential tumor cells and target them for destruction. However, tumor cells can limit inflammation by getting myeloid-deprived suppressor cells, tumor-associated macrophages, and Tregs to dampen the local immune response. Bacteria carry a number of conserved features, like flagella and LPS, that are detected by TLRs, nod-like receptors, and C-type lectin receptors on macrophages and dendritic cells. Both of these immune cells can respond by releasing cytokines to induce inflammation. Neutrophils are also capable of releasing a net, or neutrophil extracellular trap, which is composed of the neutrophil's DNA and extracellular fibers. The rupture and release of this net causes a unique form of cell death in the neutrophil, also known as netosis. APCs can also run into parasites, being attracted by the parasites chitins, glycans, and lipids. APCs can then elicit a Th2 response, while granulocytes and mast cells also respond to the parasite threat. Innate lymphoid cells can be difficult to phenotype, as they don't share markers commonly associated with lymphocytes, despite sharing similar functionalities. Group 1 consists of NK cells and ILC1 cells that have Th1-like functions. Group 2 consists of Th2-like cells, called ILC2s. And finally, Group 3 consists of lymphoid tissue inducer, or LTI cells, which aid in lymphoid tissue development and NCR positive or negative ILC3 cells. Group 3 promotes a Th17-like response. We'll talk about these T helper cells in just another moment. Once APCs have encountered their target and internalized it, they can exit to a nearby draining lymph node. Endogenous or internal antigen peptides are transferred onto MHC1 for presentation to CD4 positive T cells. Exogenous or external antigen peptides are placed into an MHC2 groove to be shown to CD8 positive T cells. If the T cell is co-stimulated and has a T cell receptor specific for its target, the T cell will start an immune response. Normally, CD8 T cells help destroy tumors and infected cells. However, too much stimulation can also limit an immune response. If T cells are constantly stimulated, either by viruses or by cancer, for example, the T cell can become exhausted, making it less effective in cytokine secretion and proliferation. Exhausted T cells will die unless they're rescued by a blockade of inhibitor receptors like PD-1 and CTLA-4. CD4 positive T cells, or T helper cells, can adopt a number of different phenotypes depending on the cytokines they're given. They're typically identified by their transcription factors and the cytokines that they express. Th1 cells can be induced by interferon gamma and will express Tbet. Th1 cells create large amounts of interferon gamma, triggering a number of inflammatory functions like CD8 T cell promotion, APC maturation, and antibody class switching in B cells. These functions help to clear out intracellular pathogens and eradicate tumor cells. Th2 cells are induced by IL-4 and IL-33 and are denoted by their GATA3 expression. The Th2 cells are vital for defense against parasites and allergens. They also support humoral responses with IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13 secretion. Induced by IL-4 and TGF-beta, Th9 cells are also involved with parasite defense. They make IL-9, which affects epithelia, mucus production, and intestinal barrier permeability. They also make IL-21, which promotes lymphocyte chemotaxis and interferon gamma production. T 
TH17 cells can be induced by combinations of TGF-beta, IL-1, IL-6, and IL-23, and express transcription factors like ROR gamma T. With the help of IL-17, IL-21, and IL-22, this T helper class excels at inflammation, helping to defend against extracellular pathogens like bacteria and fungi. Th22 cells can be generated by IL-6 and TNF-alpha. Similar to Th17 cells, they produce IL-22 for epithelial cell growth, improved intestinal barrier functions, and increased mucus and antibacterial peptide production. These AHR expressing Th22 cells also make TNF-alpha and IL-13, which aid in parasite defense. CD4 T cells can become Tregs or T regulatory cells, one of the few cell types that can limit its inflammatory counterparts. FOXP3 expressing Tregs can restrict inflammatory responses by limiting available survival factors, emitting immunosuppressive cytokines, and creating adenosine to induce T effector cell energy. Finally, we come to B cells which rely on follicular T helper cells to develop. These BCL6 expressing T cells specialize in stimulating and developing B cells. Depending on the type of cytokines produced by the TFH cell, B cells can be biased toward different class switches for their antibodies. These antibodies opsonize targets, trigger complement cascades, and can even induce allergic responses. If you've listened to this walkthrough from beginning to end, you can now appreciate and understand how complex our immune systems are. You can request a free copy of this poster in the link below, or check out our literature page. Thanks for watching.